So today we're going to be solving systems of equations that have some unusual answers. And I'm going to show you how to solve them algebraically and with a graph. All right. So notice, for my first system of equations, I've got y equals negative 2x plus 4 and 6x plus 3y equals 12. And since one of the equations has y equals, this is going to be an easy substitution situation. So I'm going to substitute all the stuff in for y in the second equation. So my second e equation becomes 6x plus 3 times, instead of y, 3 times all the things y is equal to, 2x plus 4, and that's going to equal 12. All right? Now, do my distributive property next. So I get 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x, and 3 times 12, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, equals 12. All right? Now, on the left side, I've got two different groups of x's, so I can combine my like terms here. 6x minus 6x leaves me with nothing. So all that's left on the left side is 12. And drop down my equals and drop down my other side. Now notice, I'm left now with an equation with no variables in it. And it says 12 is equal to 12, which is a true statement. 12 is equal to 12. 12 will always equal 12. But because there's no variables, there's nothing left for me to do. So I look at this and I say, OK, this tells me that there are infinitely many solutions. Many solutions. What that means is any combination of x and y that works in the first equation will also work in that second equation. OK, so whenever you get an, an algebra equation where you end up solving it and you get to a point where there's no variables and a number equals itself, that tells you there's infinitely many solutions. All right, now let's see what this looks like on a graph. All right, so this first equation is in slope-intercept form. So this one's easy to graph. My y-intercept's 4. And my slope is negative 2, so it means down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. So it's going to follow this pattern here. And I will continue it the other way. And I'll draw in my line. OK, there it is. Now, for my second equation, it's in standard form. So I'm going to graph it by plotting the, intercept, the intercepts. If x is 0, what does y have to be so that 3 times y equals 12? Well, y has to be 4. So the combination 0, 4 is a point on my line. So notice it's also that point. Now, if y is 0, what does x have to be so that 6 times x equals 12? x has to be 2. So 2, 0 is another point on my line. Now notice, my intercepts are also on the same, they're also on the line, that blue line I already graphed. And if I draw my line through my intercepts, notice, my line ends up right on top of the other line. Now, if you recall, the solution to a system of equations is the point of intersection. And since the line is on top of the other line, all the points on the line are points of intersection. They intersect everywhere on this line. So that tells us that any point on the pink line is a solution to the system. And any point on the blue line is a solution to the system, which is exactly what we found over here. There are infinitely many solutions because every point on the line is a solution. All right, so that's what this looks like algebraically and on a graph. All right, so let's look at a, a second example here. We've got y equals 3x plus 2 and negative 6x plus 2y equals 6. All right, let's do it gra uh, algebraically first. Since y equals all of this, I'm going to start by substituting all of that in for y. So I've got negative 6x plus 2 times, instead of 2 times y, 2 times all of the stuff that y equals, and that equals 6. All right, so now let's do our distributive property here because we've got the parentheses. So 2 times 3x is 6x, and 2 times 2 is 4. All right. Now, we do have x's on the same side of the equal sign, so let's combine them together. So negative 6x plus 6x is nothing, but all that's left on the left side is 4, 
and I'll drop down my equals and drop down my six, and look what happens here. I end up with an equation with no variables, just like last time. But this time, I get four equals six. Now, four doesn't equal six. Four, four never equals six. Okay, whereas before we ended up with an equation with no variables, but 12 equals 12, which is a true statement. Now we end up with an equation with no variables, but a false statement. Four doesn't equal six. So what that tells us is there is no solution. In other words, there is no combination of x and y that will work for both equations. There might be a combination that works for the first equation, there might be a combination that works for the second equation, but there is no combination that will work for both. Okay? So, now let's graph this and see what this looks like. Okay, so for this first one, y equals 3x plus 2. It's in slope-intercept form, so I'll plot the y-intercept at 2. My slope is 3, so up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, and I'll continue the pattern the other way. And when I draw on my line, I'll have my first graph. Okay, there's the first line. Now, for the second one, I've got it in standard form. So let's graph the intercepts. If x is 0, 2 times what will equal 6? Well, then y would have to be 3, because 2 times 3 is 6. So 0, 3 is my intercept. Now, what if y is 0? Negative 6 times x will equal 6. What's x have to be? Well, negative 6 times negative 1 will equal 6. So negative 1, 0 is my second intercept. All right, so let's draw this line. Ooh, it's really close to the other one, but let's see. If I draw my line in here, there it is. Now, notice something here. The solution to a system of equations is the point of intersection. Look at these two lines. They're very close to each other, but notice they run parallel to each other. These two lines will never intersect. Since they'll never intersect, there's no solution, which is exactly what we got over here. All right, so two, two lines that run parallel and never intersect have no solution. That's what that looks like on a graph. On, in algebra, it'll look like a situation where there's no variables and a number is equal to a different number. All right, so here. Here is what we ended up with today. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe, it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.